Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 31st of April. India's COVID-19 recovery rate is 17.48%, says Health Ministry. Government discriminating Gilgit Baltistan in fight against COVID-19, alleged PPP leader. And Sri Lanka marks a year since devastating Easter Sunday attacks. And now for all the details. India has so far recorded over 18,600 positive cases of novel coronavirus, while the death toll has climbed to 590 as on Tuesday. India's health ministry said that 3,252 people have recovered so far, taking recovery percentage to 17.48%. India has reported 1,336 more COVID-19 cases, taking the count of coronavirus cases in the country to 18,601 in last 24 hours, said the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on Tuesday. Out of these, 14,759 patients are active cases and 590 deaths have been reported till now. Addressing a press briefing on the coronavirus situation in the country, the health ministry said that 3,252 people have recovered so far, taking India's recovery percentage to 17.48%. During the press briefing, Chairman of Fourth Empowered Group to Tackle COVID-19 said that covidwarriors.gov.in has been created as a master database of healthcare professionals and volunteers. Up to the country, 3,252 people have been cured. In the past, there are 705 people who have been cured. And it takes our recovery percentage to 17.48%. Meanwhile, District administration in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir region is setting up temporary facilities at indoor stadium and other places preparing for rapid COVID-19 outbreak. Nearly 9,500 total capacity मेरे पास quarantine की थी उसमें से 3,000 bedded जो capacity है वो declare की गई है wellness centers के लिए इसमें बेहतरीन facilities जो हैं वो create की जा रही हैं और उसके अलावा जो जितना period उनका stay का है उसके लिए hygiene kit या बाकी सारे जो requirement हैं वो provide की जा रही हैं। Racing against time to fight the deadly virus, the authorities said the centers will be ready by Thursday. Jammu and Kashmir territory currently has a total of 368 cases and the cases are increasing constantly. Pakistan's anti-graft watchdog, the National Accountability Bureau, has again asked National Assembly Leader of Opposition, Shehbaz Sharif, to appear before its combined investigations team on April 22nd in connection with an assets beyond means case. The National Accountability Bureau, or NAP, has again summoned Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz President an opposition leader in the National Assembly, Shabazz Sharif, to appear before its combined investigations team on April 22 in a money laundering and income beyond means investigation. Shabazz on April 17 skipped a NAP hearing as he requested it to exempt him from appearing till end of the coronavirus pandemic in view of his health conditions. NAB summoned Sharif with an assurance that all safety measures would be adopted regarding the pandemic. The Bureau has asked Shabazz to provide details of properties inherited by him. NAP also asked Shabazz to submit bank details along with the loans taken from Barclays Bank from 2005 to 2007. Furthermore, NAP also sought details of all gifts received and given by the family, details of agriculture income from 2008 to 2019. Last year in December, NAP has issued orders to freeze 23 properties belonging to Shivas and his sons over the allegation that they acquired assets beyond their means and committed money laundering. Moving on, 
Amid the spike in COVID-19 cases in Gilgit Baltistan, Provincial President of Pakistan People's Party Amjad Hussain has alleged the local administration for not doing enough for the locals in illegally occupied region. Gilgit Baltistan, which has poor healthcare infrastructure and ill-equipped to tackle the COVID-19 outbreak, has so far recorded at least 281 cases. With new COVID-19 cases emerging in illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan on daily basis, Provincial President of Pakistan People's Party or PPP has blamed local government for not doing much for the residents in the region. PPP leader Amjad Hussain, while addressing a press conference recently, took a jibe at Gilgit Baltistan Chief Minister Hafizur Rahman for not procuring coronavirus testing kits or any ration for the needy during the ongoing pandemic and is only busy filling his pockets. He claimed the region is facing lack of health facilities as ruling PML and government has done nothing for the welfare of public till date. If there is lockdown, then the development of the budget is converted and diverted to health care health care emergency. No, Hafiz Uraman is procuring a test kit for testing kit. ना अभी जुरामान किसी अस्पताल के ऊपर दो रुपए लगा रहा है, ना अभी जुरामान किसी मरीज के ऊपर खर्च कर रहा है, ना अभी जुरामान जो लोग मुतासर हैं उन तक राशन पहुंचा रहा है, अभी जुरामान साहब की तरफ से तो कुछ भी नहीं होगा। Gilgit Baltistan in the latest has recorded 281 cases of coronavirus with 81 active cases. Overall, 195 patients have recovered from the disease. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan have time and again raised voices against the Karab administration under Pakistan's rule, which has never treated them equal to other citizens of the country. In news from Afghanistan, with 35 more confirmed COVID-19 cases in Afghanistan till Monday night, the toll in the country has risen to over 1,000 with 36 deaths. The spike comes as Afghanistan last week extended its Kabul quarantine until May 9. 35 new positive corona cases were reported in Afghanistan on Monday night, bringing the total cases to 1,031, said a spokesman for the Afghan Health Ministry. The 35 new positive corona cases have been reported in Afghan capital Kabul and provinces like Herat, Langman, Kunar and Nangarhar. Three COVID patients also died on Monday, bringing the dead toll to 36, while the number of patients who were discharged from the hospitals rose to 135. To contain the pandemic, the Afghan government has put big cities, including capital Kabul, under quarantine since late March, calling on people to remain at home. In a latest effort to contain the spread of COVID-19, the Afghan government last week also extended the quarantine for the second time for a further 21 days, which is expected to end on March 9. Afghanistan has also received large consignments of hydrochloroxine and paracetamol tablets and 5,000 tons of wheat as an aid by India to fight the pandemic. Moving on, Sri Lanka Selection Commission announced Monday evening it would conduct the country's parliamentary polls on June 20th. The parliamentary elections were postponed for nearly two months in wake of the coronavirus outbreak in the country. <laughs> Sri Lanka's chairman of the National Election Commission, Mahinda Deshpri, on Monday said that the parliamentary elections postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic will be held on June 20. The polls were initially planned to be held on April 25, but were postponed last month following the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The parliamentary polls were announced six months ahead of the schedule after Sri Lankan President Gotapaya Rajapaksa dissolved the parliament on March 2. Gotapaya, who was elected as president in November, wanted a new parliament to implement his mandate. Meanwhile, all opposition parties and many civil society groups have urged the government to show caution in trying to rush through holding the election. Sri Lanka has been under a 24-hour curfew since March 20 to combat the deadly viral infection. The government on Monday dropped its decision to relax the nationwide curfew and extend it to April 27 following a sudden spike in coronavirus cases. The island nation has so far reported 295 COVID-19 cases, including seven deaths, since the first viral infection was reported in the country on March 11. Sri Lanka on Tuesday commemorated the first anniversary of the Easter Sunday attacks that killed nearly 260 people. 
Amidst the lockdown to combat the novel coronavirus, people across the country marked two minutes of silence with lighting lamps and prayers on the occasion. Bells in Sri Lankan churches and temples rang out on Tuesday, marking the time of series of attacks that killed more than 260 people and injured about 500 others across the country last year. People across the country also marked two minutes of silence with some then pausing of light lamps in temples or pray in mosques. Priests at St. Anthony's prayed in front of an altar with the names of those who died at the church. The events took place with 24-hour curfew still in place in Colombo to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus. Those who perpetrated this heinous act wanted racial rights, religious rights in this country. And by our patience, by working together as brothers and sisters of one country, we prevented that serious situation. The blast by nine suicide bombers belonging to Milton Group Islamic State targeted three churches and three luxury hotels, shocking Sri Lanka and shattering a decade of relative peace after the end of a 25-year civil war. Nearly all victims were Sri Lankans who had gathered to celebrate Easter Sunday at churches. Dozens of foreigners were also killed. The attacks were carried out despite intelligence agencies giving detailed information about the impending attacks to Sri Lankan authorities. A presidential commission of inquiry is currently investigating why the warnings were ignored by the Sri Lankan officials. Bangladesh's health ministry officials said the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country reached 3,382 and that toll rose to 110 on Tuesday. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Bangladesh reached 2,948, including 492 new cases confirmed in the last 24 hours, a senior health ministry official said on Monday. This is the biggest daily jump in 24 hours since March 18. The death toll of COVID-19 in Bangladesh has reached 101. Professor Nasima Sultana, a senior health ministry official in a press conference on current coronavirus situation in the country, said that samples from 2,779 persons were tested in the last 24 hours across Bangladesh. Ten more patients were released from hospital, bringing the number of recovered patients in the country so far to 85. Meanwhile, Bangladesh extended its nationwide lockdown till April 25 in a move to curb the coronavirus pandemic. The army has been deployed across the country to enforce social distancing measures. With the number of COVID-19 cases rising in the country, an Indian professor in capital New Delhi is making low-cost face masks in order to make them affordable for all. The professor claims the masks are made with such raw materials and design that can give maximum protection to people. A professor in Indian capital New Delhi has developed low-cost masks to help people belonging to lower-income class to afford them and protect themselves from coronavirus. Assistant Professor at Indian Institute of Technology or IIT Delhi, Bipin Kumar, came up with the idea of making cheap masks to make it accessible for all people of the country. At the cost of less than a dollar, the price of the mask named Kawach by Kumar is comparatively low as compared to other masks in markets. Kawach is uh, the initiative done to help our massive population, uh, give, us, give them the maximum protection from our indigenous textile technologies. So in Kavach, we are using the right kind of raw material and best fitting design so that it can give you the maximum protection at a very, very affordable price. With the number of coronavirus cases rising each day in India, more and more number of people are wearing masks that has reportedly led to a shortage and therefore a rise in the price of the commodity. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन